You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is Nagel and Knowles. Everyone has the right to feel physically and psychologically safe in their workplace. The multidimensional team of Nagel and Knowles will discuss the process for helping organizations with this growing problem that we face in our society today. From a simple lack of respect in the workplace to bullying to extreme violence, Nagel and Knowles will create a more healthy and harmonious atmosphere. So now, please welcome Nagel and Knowles, your workplace violence prevention experts. Welcome to the Nagel Knowles broadcast, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Nagel Knowles and Associates are your workplace violence prevention experts. We are a collaborative, multidisciplinary team of professionals who have synchronized all our efforts on ways to reduce the risk of workplace violence. We do it all, from cultural assessments to vulnerabilities assessments, from policies and procedures creation and rollouts to active shooter protocols, from training and workplace violence prevention facilitations to teaching leaders how to lead more effectively. Please check us out at nagelknowlesandassociates.com. You are listening to yours truly, Claire Knowles and Richard Knowles this morning as we talk together about preventing workplace violence and especially how to do that while drawing from the basic lessons we learned from kindergarten. Yes, from kindergarten. The rules from kindergarten transcend to our workplace interactions, too, and point to ways to eliminate dysfunctional behaviors. For example, what would happen to bullying if we played fair? What would happen to vengeful acts in the workplace if we were watching out for others? What would happen to sexual harassment if we kept our hands to ourselves? And what would happen to incivilities if we said we're sorry if we hurt somebody? What would happen to the need for active shooter protocols if, when we all went into our workplaces, we were diligent at looking for those who do not belong on the premises and who should not be there, and that we all stuck together? What would happen if the code of conduct for our workplaces included the requirement for a respectful workplace? You know, 25 years ago, Robert Fulgham wrote a phenomenal best-selling book called All I Really Need to Know, I Learned in Kindergarten. And in it, he offered some uncommon thoughts on common things. His book has been quoted and requoted over and over again because it is so basically profound. Would that we all could behave in the workplace using the same guidelines that we learned way back then then respect would reign, and we'd be making huge steps towards reducing the risk of workplace violence. Why? Because it all comes back to the interactions of people, whether we are five years old or whether we are acting like five-year-olds. Hi, I'm Dick Knowles, joining my wife and partner, Claire Knowles, for this Nagel Knowles show today. When Claire first raised the idea of kindergarten lessons for a backdrop for a Nagel Knowles show, I was a bit hesitant, wondering, would that be too elemental? But when I pulled the book from our bookshelf and read it, the inscription from a friend, I knew we needed to incorporate this for the reflective insights on a very difficult topic, how to reduce the risk of violence in our workplaces. The book was provided to me as a gift as I left the manufacturing plant I was managing and went to corporate headquarters to work as director of safety and emergency response. The inscription in the book read like this. Richard, share everything. Play fair. I suppose that no matter where you go, Richard, these lessons will take you through even the most trying times. You certainly emulated them for me. 
Say you're sorry when you hurt somebody. Flush. Live a balanced life. These will go with you, I'm sure. I thank you for the lasting example you have set, both for companies and citizens. I'm honored to have worked with you. These lessons ring so true. And finally, Richard, when you go out into the world, never forget to hold hands, watch out for traffic, and stick together. And always be aware of wonder. This was from my friend Robin with a P.S. I'll miss you. The inscription you just read, Richard, is wonderful and very poignant. The book called All I Really Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten underscores that the wisdom that helps us to go through life and, yes, into our work lives and into facing the spectrum of workplace violence prevention requires courage and wisdom. And that basic wisdom was not at the top of the graduate school mountain, but right there in the sand pile of kindergarten class and in recess, too. How often we heard it said that many of our employees cannot seem to play fair in the workplace sandbox. Hmm, it is timely then to resurrect some of those nuggets of wisdom from our kindergarten learnings. As we go forward in today's broadcast, we'll continue to talk about what we do in workplaces to reduce the risk of workplace violence, ranging from rudeness to incivilities to bullying to harassment to vengeful acts even to murder by an active shooter, alongside many of the revelations stemming from the lessons of kindergarten, like these. Play fair. Don't hit anyone. Keep your hands to yourself. Clean up your own mess. Don't take things that aren't yours. Say you're sorry when you hurt somebody. Share. Put things back where you found them. Take care of yourself. Take care of others. Take care of this place. Would that we all could follow these simple rules in our workplaces. Then respect would reign. And yes, the spectrum of workplace violence would be diminished. When this kindergarten lessons book was first published, who knew that it was destined to become a modern classic? It is a book to raise the spirits and warm the heart, all the while knowing that it also addresses the way we manage ourselves while we grapple with whatever it is that life throws at us. That's why it's so powerful. I find it interesting as an HR professional and a supporter of emotional intelligence competencies in our workplaces that this book precedes the whole arena of emotional intelligence, which speaks to knowing ourselves, respecting others, and learning to regulate our emotions so that we can function as mature adults within a stressful world. Hey, maybe revisiting a kindergarten should be considered when addressing dysfunctional behaviors in our workplaces. So as we go forward with the Nagel Knowles broadcast today, let's think about this in terms of the code of conduct which every organization, every human resource manager, and every CEO could embrace. What is the code of conduct, the behaviors that your organization has in place and which are enforced and that are embraced up and down the organization so that the spectrum of workplace violence in all its ugly forms can be prevented? When you wrap these tenets of behavior up together, you'll find that respect is at the very core. We know this well, that one, we must learn to take care of ourselves Two, take care of others. And three, take care of this place. These are among the three pillars of workplace respect and civility. It's a matter of will. Nagel and Knowles have the processes that will help you to do that. We're coming up to a short break. Got a couple seconds yet before we go into that. So I just want to restate here about... The Employee's Code of Conduct, it really does outline the expectations regarding employees' behavior. It's about our core values toward our colleagues, supervisors, and our overall organization. We all expect them to foster a well-organized, respectful, and collaborative environment. When we come back from the break, we'll move right into some of these tenants learned in kindergarten, which are basic building blocks for respectful workplaces. We invite you to call in, if you would like, at 866-451-1451. You're listening live to the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. This is yours truly, Richard Knowles and Claire Knowles. 
Come right back. Please stay tuned. There are artists and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians, and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History in the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at Les Col des Beaux-Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20-year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the realization of your dreams by making them a reality. Based in Quebec, Canada, Joanne is also a space coach using social media and Skype to work with anyone, anywhere around the world. Contact Joanne Charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca 819-360-3266 Now is your time. Welcome back. This is Claire Knowles and Richard Knowles of Nagel and Knowles, and you're coming to us live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. The work that we do at Nagel Knowles and Associates is all about reducing the risk of workplace violence, whether it's from incivilities and unprofessionalism to bullying, harassment, right on through active shooter, and the worst of all, murder in the workplace. Today, we're lifting up some lessons from kindergarten because they are so profound. And as leaders and HR managers and supervisors and CEOs for our workplaces, we can learn from integrating these lessons. Our policies, codes of conduct, for example. After all, our employee code of conduct should outline your expectations and values regarding employees' behavior toward their colleagues, supervision, and the overall organization. You know, in a 2017 survey by People Development Network, the question was asked, what are the very things that make for a satisfying workplace? And the answer is that people want to be treated with respect, with dignity, and have a sense of belonging, a connectedness in the workplace. Those are key words for codes of conduct, for respectful workplace policies, and for the treatment of people. Those three tenets, respect, dignity, and a sense of belonging. And when you take some of those kindergarten lessons that we recited in the last segment, sure enough, those tenets for respect and dignity and belonging come through. So in this specific segment, let's lift up four kindergarten lessons from the book, All I Really Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten by Robert Fulgham. In this specific segment, we'll talk about play fair, share everything, put things back where you found them, and clean up your own mess. The very things that work for teams in our workplaces, for taking care of ourselves, each other, and the workplace. Again, play fair, share everything, put things back where you found them, and clean up your own mess. These are such basic tenets of how we should really be together. It's very simple, yet sometimes we make it very complex. We have found that workplace violence really is a continuum of behaviors that begin with lack of respect, and it goes on to harassment and bullying and could even lead to murder in some cases. People need to be treated with dignity, respect, and have a sense of belonging if they're going to be all working together in a team. And the basic rules, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and take care of this place are pretty fundamental. If we all would live up to those three things, we would solve many problems. 
but it takes us a lot of times to have conversations together about these things and really develop the understanding of what's important and how we can really help each other. We read about a school one time that had such good morale and discipline throughout the whole school. And there was a teacher who was visiting during a rainy day and they had a fire drill and the children and the teachers all went outside and there was some construction going on so there was some mud. And after the drill, everyone went back into the school. But as they went back in the school, each of the children and the teachers took off their shoes and lined them up on the front porch of the school. And their basic tenets were, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and take care of this place. And just based on those three rules and everyone cooperating together, it was quite important. That's right. If you take those and incorporate the playing fair, share everything, put things back, clean up your own mess, that is about taking care of yourself, taking care of others, and taking care of this place. One of the things that rings for me is about playing fair. Because just think, if everyone played fair, we wouldn't have bullying, would we? Playing fair is very simple, yet it's what we all expect people to to do to treat us. I want to be treated fairly. I want to be treated with respect. And others want that same kind of treatment as well. It's important to have the conversations, create an environment where it's safe to talk together, where it's safe to be open, where it's safe to share ideas and all be able to work together in harmony. This doesn't mean we agree all the time. There may be disagreements, but we have disagreements about the facts, and we talk about them and try to sort them out and come to the best solutions. Leaders set the key for all this. They set the stage. Leaders have to be interconnecting and engaged with their people and talk about the importance of respect and dignity and helping people to belong. Leaders are the key in this to make it all happen. When I was a manager at the big chemical plant in West Virginia, I was out in the organization and I walked the plant for about five hours a day, every day for five years. I got to know the people reasonably well. We talked about lots of things. We had lots of questions going on. Part of that going around was two business meetings a week. Each was an hour long, sometimes in a shop or a control room. We talked for about 10 minutes about the business and safety and how we were doing, and and then we opened it up for questions. Every question was okay, and every question was answered. If in some cases where I didn't have an answer and didn't know the answer, I told the people I'd get back to them, and I always did. So we have to keep our word. We have to be honest. We have to be trustworthy. We have to be approachable. All these things are keys for us as leaders to set the example for everyone else. We often talk about um, what really is an employee code of conduct. Well, it's referred to as, as your conduct in the workplace policy. Really, what do you expect of people? Do you not want them to foster a well organized, respectful, and collaborative environment? I would think so. And that's why you have a code of conduct. That's why it's also part of and ingrained into a respectful workplace policy. Does your organization have one? I certainly hope so. If not, keep Nagel and Knowles and Associates in mind because we can help you. Because we do expect our employees to foster a well-organized, respectful, and collaborative environment. That collaborativeness is that teamwork. And that's where you share. And that's where you play fair. That's where you have no bullying because you have the rules to take care of yourself, take care of others and definitely to take care of this place. To do this, leaders need to take a stand and be very clear with everyone that respectful behavior, treating people with dignity and helping people to belong together is crucial for the success of their organization and crucial for the way in which they want to treat each other. They have to set these standards so they're clear for everyone to know what's going on and to live up to them. This is Claire and Richard Knowles of Nagel Knowles and Associates, your workplace violence prevention experts. We're coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. After the break, we'll be talking some more about the lessons from kindergarten. Please stay tuned. 
My Dreams, My Challenges, and Joys is an inspiring book by author Linda Genazzo. This real-life account of raising a child with autism from birth to adulthood takes you on a journey of compassion, love, and hope as it tells the incredible story of a devoted family and their beloved daughter. Together, they faced adversity and never stopped believing they would find the help they were seeking. A breast cancer survivor, Linda Genazzo has a giving heart. With a background in social work with the mentally ill and the homeless, Linda continues to help families in her community. And her book, My Dreams, My Challenges and Joys, brings greater awareness to autism and those families in need. To purchase your copy, visit www.lindagenazzo.com. It's also available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Don't delay. Get your copy today. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. Welcome back. This is Claire and Richard Knowles from Nagel Knowles and Associates.com. We're coming to you live this morning from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. The business of Nagel Knowles and Associates is about reducing the risk of workplace violence. This morning, we've been overlaying some of the lessons from kindergarten that came from the wonderful book, All I Really Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten by Robert Fulgham. Believe it or not, that book is 25 years old already. But what are the lessons from kindergarten that we're taking with us? In this particular segment, we're moving on to more lessons, and we're going to be lifting up Don't Hit People. Don't take things that aren't yours. Keep your hands to yourself. Say you're sorry when you hurt somebody. Now consider applying these kindergarten lessons to bullying, harassment, horseplay, vengeful behaviors, even theft or fraud. You know, one of the pillars of emotional intelligence is the fourth one, which specifically addresses whether or not a person has the capacity or has developed the capacity to regulate their behaviors so that they can interact with others in a mature and adult way. When you have people in the workplace who cannot play nice in the workplace sandbox, then you've got people that need to learn and develop that skill. I am an advocate for utilizing emotional intelligence, both for hiring people and interviewing people, so that we find people who can play nice in the workplace sandbox and to promote only supervisors who can lead effectively, who have a high emotional intelligence quotient, so that we know that they're fully utilizing the ability to be respectful to their people and to handle respectful people treatment principles. So much is always about power and egos in the workplace and the inability to play nice in the workplace sandbox. So, Dick, let's lift up. Don't hit people. Don't take things that aren't yours. Keep your hands to yourself. Say you're sorry when you hurt somebody. Sometimes we've gone into organizations where the behavior is really out of control. We see situations of fraud, horseplay, vengeful acts, bullying, and harassment of all sorts. People are getting hurt both physically and psychologically, and the costs to the company are enormous. All of us have two very powerful drives within us that we always have to be working on to keep under control, our sexual drive and the desire for power and control. Having some Emotional intelligence and being able to pay attention to these things and keep them in balance is really critical. And we need to help each other 
in order to do this and keep reminding each other as we're going forward. Emotion and intelligence needs to control these drives and keep them in balance. It's a constant struggle. And some organizations just can't get on top of it. For example, CBS, the CEO, Leslie Moonves, has been discharged from the company by the board for sexual harassment and then obstructing the company probe into looking into this and trying to understand it. They have also said that he's not going to get his $120 million separation agreement. And just this last week, I saw that he is challenging that, and that's going to go before the American Arbitration Association to work it out. But CBS has a much wider problem than just Leslie. Many executives and producers and stars are engaged in sexual harassment. It's a virus that's infecting the whole company. For example, actress Eliza Dushku was subjected to lewd jokes, suggestive behaviors by the star of the bull show, Michael Weatherly, and others. When the CBS chief compliance officer gave the investigators the tapes of the bull outtakes in order to clear up the mess, the tapes actually showed how real and prevalent the harassing behavior really was. The whole CBS culture was infected and was so sick they did not even see what they were doing. It had just become a way of life, and it was terribly abusive and tough on people. We have to open up the conversation so people can talk about this and not just sit and suffer in silence. We've got to do things to help the organization become safer physically and psychologically. We need to open up these things. And we can do that because we do know with emotional intelligence, you can learn to regulate and you can become aware. You have a voice and you can speak up. Leaders play such a role in this. For example, when I was the manager at this big chemical plant in West Virginia, we were having problems with sexual harassment and trying to stamp it out. And one day, the supervisor walked by a smoking stand where three or four women were on a smoking break. This was outside of the operating buildings. And he made some really bad comments about the women as he went by. And I heard about it, and I called him in. I said, what are you doing? Oh, I was just kidding around. That was all right. No problems. I said, what would you do if someone spoke to your wife or your daughter that way? He said, I beat them up. Do you realize, I said, that those are somebody's wives and daughters? This was almost like a new idea for him. He thought about it a little bit. Then I said, okay, I'll give you a choice. I'm either going to have to terminate you or you're going to go out and talk to all the people in the plant about what happened and that this is not acceptable. We got a whole lot better very, very quickly after that incident when people realized they would have to stand up and take responsibility for their behaviors. You know, you make it visible to everyone. And that shows leadership. You were able to take that stand, Richard. You absolutely were. As an HR person, I am specifically endorsing when in the HR department, when you're recruiting people, The people who are doing the interviewing really need to be emotional intelligence certified so that you can really ask the right questions. You can ask the right behavioral type of questions to get the response to really understand how do or how does this person sitting in in front of you really play fair in the sandbox. And they there's also ways that you can test for this. I know there's, there's uh, some controversy over it, but there are ways that you can validate the requirements so that you have recru- so that you can recruit people. And I specifically think it's important that supervisors be tested on their emotional intelligence quotient because you don't want people having to report to someone who in himself or herself is a bully. And this is easily done. In order for this to work out, it takes leaders to make a stand, and that takes courage, care, concern, and commitment. They have to stand up with their people and make sure these things are clear to them. This is Claire and Richard Knowles coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. After the break, we'll talk some more about what we learned in kindergarten. We'll be right back. 
Global Glory, that's the work of Dr. Marina McLean, COO of Global Glory, whose calling is to serve God. A first-generation British-born Londoner of Jamaican descent, Dr. McLean inherited the hunger for the word from her father, who was a Bible teacher. Growing up, her home was filled with missionaries from the Caribbean islands and America, and she travels the world preaching the gospel. She has a Bachelor of Arts degree in theology and an honorary doctorate of divinity and Christian counseling from France. International Christian University. Dr. McLean is also a songwriter and recording artist, and her songs are written during summits and conferences in the presence of God. She's recorded three worship albums to date and is in ministry for 28 years alongside her husband, Dr. Rennie McLean, who shares her passion. Visit www.globalglory.org or on Facebook at Global Glory. Call 866 244 5679 and feel the glory. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg one at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. Welcome back. You're listening to Claire and Richard Knowles from Nagel and Knowles, your workplace violence experts. We're coming to you live this morning from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Our business at Nagel Knowles and Associates.com, please do check us out. We are all about reducing the risk of workplace violence. And that includes everything from incivilities and unprofessionalism to bullying, harassment, vengeful acts in the workplace, up to including active shooter protocol needed for making sure we don't have that stranger in the workplace that does the bad thing. We're also about vulnerabilities. How vulnerable are you? and cultural assessments. But today, in this show, we're talking about kindergarten lessons, and we're moving on to three new ones, and they are wash your hands before you eat, flush, and warm cookies and milk are good for you. Now, you may be giggling right now, but these are basic lessons that, guess what, apply to hygiene, to taking care of yourself, to taking care of others, and making sure we don't leave a mess for our teammates, and about sharing. Yes, cookies and milk and coffee in the break room or the lunchroom are good things. The importance of team respect is here. And another big one, inclusion comes through here. You know, I'm reminded of the beach ball. It's a metaphor of the beach ball, which we will often use when we work with teams. Because consider that we are not an island, not any of us. We have to interact with people in our workplaces. So think of that beach ball. And I'm on the red stripe, and you're on the green stripe. Someone else is on the blue stripe, another on the yellow and the white and the purple. We're all on the beach ball. We're all on it together. And guess what? We're included on that beach ball. We all have to be spinning in the same direction if we're going to achieve our mission. Whether we're in kindergarten or whether we're in the workplace, we're all connected at the ground in our grounding and our rules, and at the top, where we have to be sharing our information. We depend on each color stripe on that beach ball. While we might just be one stripe, it is important to the whole beach ball. Every stripe is important, and each stripe, guess what, informs the others and depends on the others and belongs to the whole. Dick, I'm going to turn this over to you to think about the dignity, respect, and belonging aspect of this. Thank you, Claire. We have to show our caring for other people, not just talking about it, but actually doing it. Caring really is sincere when it shows up in the way in which we physically and verbally engage with each other and do our work together. 
Often as we work together, we'll make assumptions about what someone else has said. These are made up. And based on those assumptions, we begin to do things. And they look at us, and they don't know our assumptions, and they begin to make up things. And pretty soon, we all get all tangled up because our assumptions are not clear. It's very easy to make judgments of people, and it can be quite wrong. Several times, we've gone into workplaces where it seems like the people really don't care. The housekeeping sloppy. The restrooms are filthy. There are a lot of people getting hurt. There's poor use of protective equipment. Fork truck driving is careless and, and unmindful. And we can easily come to the conclusion nobody cares. But maybe the people do care. Maybe management is pushing them so hard they can't get time to do the things right. Maybe management also cares but feels so much pressure from the business needs and very little time to get things done. We have to open up the conversations, find out where people are and talk together and see what we can do to work things together. Remember the beach ball example, talking together, helping each other to see where we are, helping them to, for us to see where they are becomes really, really critical. And in the course of this, we can get a lot better. Let me share a story about assumptions and what can happen when they become visible. Stephen Covey told in his book, Seven Habits, about a story, a time when he was riding on a subway car one Sunday morning in New York City. There were just a few people in the car. It was quiet. People were reading the paper or dozing. And a man got onto the car with two young kids. And he's just slumped into the corner. And the kids began to run around the car, disturbing people, knocking the papers out of their hands. And people fairly quickly got upset. And someone finally said to the man, can't you control your kids? And he looked up and he said, well, we've just come from the hospital. Their mothers died. And I don't know what to do. Immediately, everything changed in that car from being irritated with the man to looking at him and trying to help him with his kids. Opening up and sharing is important. We worked in a big hospital in Toronto, and the CEO realized the need to have more open communications, and so she began what she called the Rose Garden Dialogues. And every week, she would go out for an hour on one day or another to the Rose Garden and sit no agenda, and anyone who wanted to talk with her came, and they talked about whatever was on people's minds. Over the course of time, that totally transformed the way in which people in that hospital were working together. They began to see each other as people, began to share, began to help each other. The processes I was using as a plant manager of walking around the plant, listening, looking, talking with people, learning together, sharing ideas, trying to explain why we were doing one thing or another. All these become very important as we engage with each other. We can create a culture of caring where we can look out for each other. If we don't do this, tragedies will happen. For example, there was one organization where there was a lady who was a very good worker, and people liked her, but they weren't able to talk together about important things. And she was not able to tell them that she, she and her husband were having trouble, and he was under a restraining order to stay away from her. No one knew this, and he showed up one day at the receptionist with a bouquet of flowers and said he'd like to take them back to his wife. Everybody thought that was really nice, so he took the flowers back to his wife and shot her. We need to have a culture where it's open and people are safe to talk about important things and where we care for and we help each other all the time. We need to create the safety and the space where people can talk and share. And a large part of showing people that we care is actually doing the caring and looking out for each other. That's right, Dick. We talk about respect. We talk about teamwork. We talk about inclusion. And I just want to underscore here that one of the things about Nagel and Knowles is that we teach leadership. We have a process that actually involves everyone. So those conversations can be held and they can be held in a safe environment where people can come forward. People can do, um, can bring forth what needs to be heard, what people need to know and share. It's again, it's very much a teamwork uh, type of, of process. And I invite you to check it out. This is Nagel and Knowles, Claire and Dick Knowles talking with you about Preventing Workplace Violence. We're coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and, uh, and tune in radio. We'll be right back. Please stay tuned. America is out of control. 
Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact the symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. French Rastafarian baker Chef Hugues Mott is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Chef Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Ugmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Welcome back. This is Claire and Richard Knowles with Nagel Knowles and Associates. We're coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. The firm of Nagel and Knowles is all about reducing the risk of workplace violence. And we ask you to please check us out, NagelKnowlesAndAssociates.com. Today, we're overlaying the lessons of kindergarten. Yes, the fundamental lessons and how they apply to reducing the risk of workplace violence. In this segment, we're going to lift up these. When you go out into the work world, watch for traffic. Be careful of strangers. Have an awareness of what's going around you and hold hands, stick together. Once again, the threads of taking care of yourself, taking care of others, and taking care of this place come through. So when you think about things like your organization's vision and mission, certainly your code of conduct, your respectful workplace policy, and your safety procedures, your security procedures, think about the fundamental lessons from t- kindergarten and how they can be incorporated. After all, what does having an awareness about what's going mm-hmm. around you have to do with the need for active shooter protocol? And how do you take care of others? Do you practice brother's sister's keeper? They're all important in our workplace sandboxes. You know, at Nagel and Knowles, our offerings cover the gamut from HR, safety, security, civility, and leadership. We do urge you to check out our website. But now let's lift these up again. When you go out into the world, watch for traffic and strangers. Hold your hand, hold hands and stick together. Every day as we go to work, as we go out to the world, as we go to stores, as we meet together, we find that the road has potholes. Things can be difficult. The hill may be steep. But we have to work together and help each other through all of this. A number of years ago, I read Scott Peck's book, The Road Less Traveled. And the very first sentence in the book was, life is difficult. And I knew this was going to be a good book, and I could learn a lot from it. As we go into our workplaces, you can see how much distractions there are from what's going on. Some people aren't paying attention. They'll walk out onto a floor where fork trucks are moving around. This is very, very dangerous. You see people using cell phones, not paying attention to where they're going, or they're listening to the MP3 players. Slow-moving equipment in areas where people are working and walking and talking can be very, very dangerous. Amazon is one of the least safe companies in the United States because in their big warehouses with all the activities, they're having a number of people getting hurt. 
you'd think a warehouse would be a safe place. It's a place where a lot of people can get hurt because you've got slow-moving equipment and people aren't paying attention. They take for granted that things are okay. You have a similar situation on construction sites where you have big machines that are moving slowly. And people take for granted you're going to be okay, but they can often get hurt from those. We have to help each other to pay attention. I think it's important to interject here uh, something that was on our last week's program and the week before that when we were talking about active shooter protocol and med- uh, mitigating uh, circumstances in the workplace. And one of the things that was brought up was just this, the lack of awareness, not paying attention to what's happening around us. Think about the situational awareness as it applies to active shooter protocol. Do you know what's happening? Do you know where you are in every any given moment so that you know where you would go and what you would do? Those are very important lessons. This lesson from kindergarten to be able to hold hands and know where you are is so important. Another area of challenge for us is helping people who are working alone in their work. Nurses, for example, who are working alone, who are going to homes to visit, are often exposed to a great deal of violence because the patient may not be thinking clearly. There may be anger in the family. You just don't know what happens. And they're out there by themselves and they're exposed to this. People who are going to visit customers one-on-one, going to places that may not be very safe, they need some help. Anybody working alone We need to figure out how to help them and look after them. I don't know what the simple answers are, but we need to do a better job on that. Nurses particularly are highly vulnerable. When I was in Boy Scouts, we also were looking out for each other. When I was working on the waterfront, when the boys came down for swimming, we had to buddy them up. They would pair up with someone, and every few minutes we'd call out buddies, and everybody would have to grab their buddy's hand and hold it up so we could be sure that everybody was there and accounted for Helping to develop a culture of caring is so critical in all of this. People need to know that we care. The CEO I talked about in the previous segment was so concerned about opening up the communications. She actually moved her office from the 11th floor suite to a small office on the first floor of the hospital, right next to the cafeteria and across from the restrooms. And every time she went out of her office, she was able to meet people and talk with people, and people felt more and more comfortable with her. And this was another factor in helping to shift the whole culture of the hospital, because she took a stand, she showed she cared, she showed that respect and dignity were important. And all of these things began to come together and help that hospital become a very much better place to work. Having an awareness of what's going on and in people who work alone like that, being able to have a monitoring system, a call-in, a check-in, that type of thing, especially even for social workers as they go out into the workplace. You know, I'm reminded so much about Brothers Sisters Keeper, about caring about each other. And there are ways that we can do that. It is about building our relationships, isn't it? We need to be able to stick together. We need to be able to know we're all on that beach ball. We need to be able to have our each other's backs because isn't that what we need to do as we go out into the workplace, we keep an awareness for what's going on just as we learned in kindergarten. Keep your eyes open. Watch out for traffic and strangers. Hold hands and stick together. One of the things we can do is help to coach these people who are working alone and have them be prepared beforehand about protecting their hot buttons, taking a deep breath when they encounter a situation that's difficult, telling the tape in their heads to stop, don't just respond and react to this thing, but think what you're doing. And then with a calm voice and a respectful approach, begin to talk with people about what's going on and using the conversation to help slow things down so that you can talk and have a good emotional engagement that it will be safe for everyone. I'd like to also make sure we lift up that the Nagel Knowles team have a special, safe, conversational process that we can help your organization hold the conversations that might be needed. This is Claire and Richard Knowles of Nagel Knowles and Associates, your workplace violence prevention experts. We're coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio. After the break, we'll talk some more about lessons from kindergarten. Please stay tuned. 
Dr. Rob Moyer is the director of the Ocean River Institute, and he is passionate about saving the ocean by helping dolphins suffering from nitrogen pollution. Nitrogen is a dangerous pollutant, affecting our oceans, altering ocean ecosystems, and contributing to global warming. The Ocean River Institute provides opportunities to make a difference and encourages people to go the distance for savvy stewardship of a greater and bluer planet Earth. Partnered with organizations from Massachusetts to Florida, Alaska to the Caribbean, the Ocean River Institute's mission is to foster involvement in conservation and environmental monitoring by facilitating grassroots efforts at local and regional levels. Hello, I'm Rob Moyer of the Ocean River Institute. Please visit our website at oceanriver.org. Sign up for free e-alerts. You may call us at 617-661-6647. Our email address is info at Ocean River. Become informed and then act with us. Thank you. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomenon while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. Welcome back, everyone. You've been listening live to the Nagel Knowles broadcast on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Your hosts today are yours truly, Claire Knowles and Richard Knowles. Each week, we focus on a different topic within the realm of preventing workplace violence. Today, our focus has been on the lessons we learned in kindergarten, like play fair, don't hit anyone, and more lessons from the book, All I Really Need to Know, I Learned in Kindergarten. For example, what would happen to bullying if we played fair? What would happen to vengeful acts in the workplace if we were watching out for others? What would happen to sexual harassment if we kept our hands to ourselves? What would happen to incivilities and unprofessionalism if we said we were sorry if we hurt somebody? And what would happen to the training we do for active shooter protocols if, when we work in our workplaces, we all watched out for what didn't belong there? Eyes always looking and that we stuck together. HR managers, I ask you to listen up because there is so much learning here for incorporating into respectful workplace policies and workplace codes of conduct. To share some more, please note that the Nagel Knowles and Associates have a 24-week series airing on BBM Global Network each Saturday morning from 9 to 10 a.m. Our focus overall is to reduce the risk of workplace violence across the entire spectrum of workplace violence, stemming from incivilities to bullying to harassment to vengeful acts to murder. Our passion is to be able to make a marked difference for leaders, teams, organizations, and businesses regarding their safety, security, civility, and leadership within today's workplaces. So you will find each week as you tune in that you'll hear one or more of the team of Nagel and Knowles behind the microphone. Last week, our team member Robin Nagel was at the microphone, and he's our security expert. Today, it's Claire and Richard. Of specific interest for you is that we've put together a booklet, The Guide to Reducing the Risk of Workplace Violence, and your free copy is waiting for you. Simply go to our website, nagelnullsandassociates.com, scroll down to the comment box, and give us the address where you want us to send your free copy, and we'll pick up the postage. The booklet covers the gamut of what you need to know and do to reduce the risk of workplace violence across the spectrum. While you're perusing the website, check us out. Check out our offerings. Now, back to the lessons from kindergarten. As we're wrapping up today, I'd like all of you to begin to think about your own culture. What is it like? Is there a virus that's infecting the organization and people aren't paying attention? And I would urge all of you to talk together about this and try to sort it out and see really what's going on and what you might need to be doing. We need to have cultures where people feel safe to report a problem, 
and be where the follow-up for that problem is done expeditiously. Too many times someone reports a problem and it takes months and months before it gets resolved. This really hangs the people out and makes it difficult. There are a lot of problems with violence in the workplace. In 2017, there were 458 homicides and 275 suicides in our workplaces. This is real and it's serious and it's dangerous. So we need to help people develop a caring workplace to avoid these terrible things that are going on. This and, is, and we can do that. And we can learn from the lessons of kindergarten, can't we? Playing fair, don't hit anyone, clean up your own mess, don't take things that aren't yours, keep your hands to yourself, say you're sorry when you hurt somebody, share, put things back where you found them, and let's really think about these. To take care of yourself, take care of others, take care of this place, keep your eyes open, would that we all could follow these simple rules in our workplaces because then respect would reign. And yes, the spectrum of workplace violence would be diminished. We're about ready to uh, close this segment out and we will see you next week. In the meantime, HR managers, CEOs, really think about this. Think about looking for our guide to reduce the workplace violence, to have respectful workplaces for yourselves. Because what would happen if we could play fair? What would happen if we could keep our hands to ourselves? I want to underscore those three things about individuals. Every individual in our workplace wants to have a sense of belonging. They want respect and they want dignity. So how can you put those values into your code of conduct so that your workplace can go forward with respect? We're going to sign off now. This is Richard and Claire Knowles at NagelKnowlesAndAssociates.com coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And we will be back next week. See you then. Signing off. Listen each week for answers to all of your workplace violence concerns here on Nagel and Knowles. If you require help in your workplace setting, contact Nagel and Knowles at 716-622-6467 or log on to NagelKnowlesAndAssociates.com. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.